Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we will talk about Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome or simply ARDS. ARDS is an acute diffuse inflammatory form of lung injury caused by a wide variety of etiologies and is characterized by hypoxemia and bilateral radiographic infiltrates. It may be caused by direct lung injury or occur secondary to severe systemic illnesses. Lung damage and release of inflammatory mediators causes increased capillary permeability, exudation in alveolar septal space and alveolar space itself, resulting in non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, which leads to hypoxemia and reduced oxygenation of organs and tissues. And ARDS thus is often accompanied by multi-organ failure. In short, ARDS leads to increased dead space and reduced lung compliance. The list of causative factors for ARDS is exhaustive. Few common causes that causes ARDS include sepsis, aspiration pneumonia, infectious pneumonia, severe trauma with multiple long bone fractures leading to fat embolism, pulmonary contusion, burns, inhalational injuries including smoke inhalation, fumes inhalation or near drowning. Massive transfusion or transfusion-associated acute lung injury, post-hematopoietic stem cell transplant, acute pancreatitis, major thoracic surgery, drugs like amiodarone, chemotherapeutic agents, aspirin, heroin, and paraquat, radiation, snake bite, obstetric events like eclampsia or amniotic fluid embolism, malaria, acute liver failure, and vasculitis. Clinical features include features due to ARDS itself and you may be able to find features due to the causative factor. ARDS features include dyspnea, tachypnea, tachycardia, and bilateral fine inspiratory crackles. Confusion, respiratory distress, and cyanosis indicate severe condition. It is important to note that cough, chest pain, Wheeze, hemoptysis, and fever are not features of ARDS but may be due to underlying cause that led to ARDS. Coming on to investigations. Laboratory investigations are non-specific. Complete blood count may be normal or may reveal increased or decreased white cell count with or without left shift. Urea and electrolytes and liver function tests may be impaired if there is organ dysfunction due to hypoxemic damage, shock, or inflammatory response. Serum amylase and lipase, if increased, may indicate acute pancreatitis. Clotting profile may be abnormal if there is disseminated intravascular coagulation or DIC. DIC usually occur in ARDS related to sepsis or malignancy. CRP may be raised. Blood cultures must be taken before the start of antibiotics. ABGs or arterial blood gases is an important modality of investigation and it helps in demonstrating hypoxemia, grading severity of ARDS and knowing acid-base status. On ABGs, there will be hypoxemia, respiratory alkalosis initially with an elevated alveolar to arterial gradient. Respiratory acidosis, if present, is an alarming sign and indicates severe ARDS. Metabolic acidosis from ARDS itself is unusual and if present, it may be due to sepsis or acute kidney injury. Chest X-ray shows bilateral diffuse pulmonary infiltrates with dependent atelectasis. CT scan may help in knowing the extent of lung involvement and pick up other findings like atelectasis, consolidation, or effusion that is not picked up on chest radiograph early. The findings initially are patchy ground glass appearance which consolidate later on. Echocardiography and pulmonary artery 
catheter to measure pulmonary capillary wedge pressure may be needed in selected cases to exclude cardiac failure as a cause of pulmonary edema. Coming on to diagnosis, ARDS is a diagnosis of exclusion. High index of suspicion is needed to diagnose ARDS. History and physical examination will help in arriving at the diagnosis in most cases. Most important differential to consider is acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema which can easily be differentiated on clinical history that is orthopnea may be present as a feature of cardiac failure which is not seen in ARDS. Examination in cardiac failure will reveal S3, S4 gallop rhythm, probably murmurs and dependent edema etc. Chest x-ray will show cardiomegaly and uniform pulmonary congestion in cardiac failure. Patients responding to diuretics indicate cardiac failure. As mentioned before, in uncertain cases, echocardiography and in rare cases, right heart catheterization is needed. So to diagnose ARDS, we use Berlin definition of ARDS, which include following criteria. Number one, acute respiratory symptoms with an onset in one week or less of known clinical insult or new or worsening respiratory symptoms. Number two, bilateral pastries consistent with pulmonary edema must be present and may be detected on CT or chest radiograph. Number three, PO2 to FiO2 ratio, also known as PF ratio, less than 300 mm of mercury with a minimum of 5 cm water peep or the patient on CPAP. Here we will pause and will see what is PO2 to FiO2 ratio. PO2 is measured on ABGs and FiO2 is the fraction of oxygen in inspired air. For example, if you are giving 50% of oxygen, the FiO2 will be 0.5. So if a patient is having 60 mm of mercury PO2 and he is receiving FiO2 0.5, so PF ratio will be 60 divided by 0.5 that is that is 120 mm of mercury which indicate moderately severe ARDS. Number 4. Acute respiratory failure must not be fully explained by congestive heart failure or fluid overload. So an objective assessment for example by echocardiogram should be performed in most cases if there is no clear cause such as trauma or sepsis. To grade the severity of ARDS, the patient must be receiving a peep of 5 cm of water or must be on CPAP. So, a mild ARDS will be with a PF ratio of less than 300 mm of mercury but more than 200 mm of mercury. Moderate case will be PF ratio less than 200 mm of mercury and severe case will be PF ratio less than 100 mm of mercury. Coming on to management. Management include admission to ICU and giving supportive therapy. In early ARDS, continuous positive air pressure is given with 40 to 60 percent oxygen and it may be adequate to maintain oxygenation. But most patients need low tidal volume mechanical ventilation and indication for mechanical ventilation include PO2 less than 60 mm of mercury despite 60 percent of oxygen or rising partial pressure of carbon dioxide more than 45 mm of mercury. The large tidal volume produced by conventional ventilation plus reduced lung compliance in ARDS may lead to high peak airway pressure pneumothorax. So a low tidal volume pressure limited approach with either low or moderate high positive end expiratory pressure improves outcome. To maintain circulatory support, invasive hemodynamic monitoring with an arterial line and swan gans catheter helps in diagnosis and may be helpful in monitoring pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and cardiac output. A conservative fluid management approach improves outcome. Inotropes and blood transfusions are usually not needed but can be considered on case by case basis. Consider treating pulmonary hypertension with low dose nitric oxide which is a pulmonary vasodilator. If patient develops renal failure, hemofiltration may be considered 
and it may also be considered to achieve a negative fluid balance. To treat sepsis, first identify organism and treat it. If septic but no organism is cultured, use empirical broad spectrum antibiotics but avoid nephrotoxic antibiotics. Nutritional support is necessary. Enteral nutrition support is best with high fat antioxidant formulations. Role of steroids in established ARDS is controversial, but it can be used in steroid responsive causes of ARDS like eosinophilic pneumonia, or it can also be used in patients with refractory sepsis or community acquired pneumonia if they meet the criteria. It can also be considered in patients with moderate to severe ARDS refractory to standard therapies, but this should be considered within 14 days of starting therapy. Prone positioning is an important step and it will help relieve dependent atelectasis. Gastric ulcer prevention and DVT prophylaxis shall be given to the patient. And last but not the least, treat the underlying cause. Coming on to prognosis, overall mortality is 50 to 75 percent, but prognosis varies with age of the patient, cause that led to ARDS, for example, pneumonia will have a mortality of 86 percent, while the trauma patient will have mortality of 38 percent, and number of organs involved. If three organs are involved for more than a week, this is invariably fatal. That is all. Please give your feedback in the comment section below. If you liked this video, hit the like button, consider subscribing to this channel and share with your colleagues.